Hey everyone, Michael here. Do you want your next woodworking project to be a success? Well, in this video I'm going to talk about one of the most important things that there is to know about wood, and that is understanding how and why it can move the way it does. Have you ever built a project only to have it fall apart or to warp miserably later on? This video is going to help you understand why. So stay tuned, you're going to hear some things you might have never heard before. Now in order for us to get the best understanding of why wood does what it does, we're going to go to some place you might not expect. Let's go there right now. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, where in the world are we going right now? Are we in the Amazon rainforest? What is happening? No friends, this is just southern Indiana in the spring. Always wet, always growing. But what I'm doing is, I'm walking in the backwoods here of my property and we're going to stop so that I can show you something. Now anyone that's going to give you a tutorial of good wood movement has to start here. And that's in the forest. Because after all, this is where all of our lumber comes from. Well, why am I showing you this? For one reason and one reason only. When you look through these woods, do you notice anything? Take a good look and see if you can find anything interesting. Directly behind me here is this silver maple tree. <laughs> now, what I want you to see is that this tree is not straight at all. As a matter of fact, pretty much any tree that you're going to find in the woods is not going to be perfectly straight. It just simply does not occur in nature. Although there are some trees that might get close to it, finding something that is perfectly straight is very difficult. Now the thing is, in good lumber, you want everything to be as perfectly straight as possible. And so this sort of presents a challenge to us, and I'll tell you why. Even behind me here I have this large cherry tree, and as you can see it's bent all over the place. The reason this presents a difficulty is because every tree has something called stress. And the more stress that you have in a log, the less quality lumber you're going to have, and therefore the less potential ability for your project to turn out well in the long run because you're always going to be introducing that stress in the project regardless of how far along in the process you take this lumber. And so for most woodworkers this is something that is totally out of their control because the lumber that they buy off the rack they'd have a very difficult time knowing was this tree even straight to begin with. Well one of the places that we can go to to really start understanding why wood does what it does is in another unlikely place. And for that, I'm going to take you back into the shop. Okay, what are we looking at here? Well, we have two pieces of firewood, that's what. On the left, we have a straight-grained piece of hickory. On the right, we have a gnarly piece of hickory. Okay, why is this important? Well, first of all, like I was saying, there is stress involved in all wood. Wood gets stressed out. People are stressed out. We ought to be able to understand this. Obviously, the less stress we have, the more straight grained. Therefore, the less inclination for wood to warp. This piece here was cut out of uh, a crotch end of a log. And as you can see, when the wood decided to split, it did all kinds of crazy things. There's inclusions, crevices, there's highs and lows. And you can see that throughout the entire piece front to back. There's one of the knots that was including on the side there. And so something like this might be beautiful to our eyes, but it may not be the most stable. Now, let's go ahead and run both of these pieces through a joiner, and we'll see what they look like once they're cleaned up a little bit. Okay, first correction I have to make. This is actually a piece of ash right here, and this is a piece of hickory. Regardless, after joining these surfaces and getting them nice and flat, you can see how the grain direction on this one 
is going nice and straight all the way through. Whereas the grain direction on this piece of ash, who knows where it's going. It's kind of this way, and then it kind of curves in down this way. We've got some of this kind of stuff going on. Something like this, most people would say nowadays, is the more beautiful of the two pieces once finished. However, for the sake of this video and understanding stability, this one is going to be much better. The simple answer for that again is there is less stress in this piece of wood than in this one. Now as I touch this, I want you to notice something. See how that wiggles? Because this came off a wood splitter. When something comes off the wood splitter, it is going to go the direction of the grain every time. The straighter the grain, the better the wood. You can even see here how this kind of has a wave to it as it came off. Now part of that is these knots on the back, but this side cut pretty straight. So even this being perfectly, you know, straight more or less, still has some wobble coming off the splitter. Now, if you want to build really, really nice furniture, find yourself the straightest grain wood you can, split it by hand, and then do very minimal joining, planing, shaving, whatever. But for the purposes of this video, it's just demonstrating two different types of wood. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into this. I don't want to presume anyone's intelligence, but let me tell you this. One of the great many mysteries to me is people that start in woodworking and generally speaking, they could be from something like, let's say, an engineering background where they're used to designing things with extreme tolerance, hundreds of thousands of inches. And they go about building a project with calipers and micrometers and all these things. And then within a few weeks time, they find that this project has moved or their joints don't fit or something like that. The wood starts to begin to crack or warp or whatever. Listen, all wood moves, regardless of how it's cut, how it's dried, anything. What we're talking about then is the variance. How much does it move? Why does it crack and why does it warp the way it does? And to understand that, we need to understand grain direction. We already talked about the fact that when we go out in the woods, we'll see trees that are not perfectly straight. So from the sawmill, when it's cut, we're usually cutting somewhere uh, not directional with the grain of the wood. So we're already dealing with some stress. Either it's very minor or it could be very major. Very major stress lumber usually does not make it to market because it's so warped and it's so bent that it's just not sellable. So what we're dealing with then is minor to moderate variances in the wood that is cut. Does that make sense? So then, knowing that stress must be involved in the woodworking process and variances must occur and all wood does move, we just need to have a simple conversation about why it does what it does. And that has to do with looking at the grain direction itself. So I'm going to show you a couple examples to help get our minds wrapped around this a little bit so that you and I can both have much better woodworking projects in the future. In this instance, I have two different pieces of white oak. Now the species doesn't really matter so much because all wood is going to behave pretty much exactly the same. What I want to show you here is a three-fold way to examine wood. Now, what we're dealing with here is already dimension lumber, and it's very important that we understand that. If we're looking at a piece of firewood, this really, it, it will make sense, but not in the way that it will explaining it here. What I mean by a three-fold process is we're gonna have an end grain, we're gonna have the top surface, and we're gonna have a side surface. Okay, so, first we're gonna look at the end grain. On this piece of wood, it's what we would call flat sawn. And by the way, if you want a good video explaining the different types of wood that are sawn, I will have a link in the description box below to a video I made several years ago explaining from a log how wood is sawn. But this is a flat sawn piece of white oak. Now I'm gonna draw the grain on here because it's not necessarily easy to see. It goes kind of like this in this one. But more or less, our grain is going in kind of a curved pattern, if you will. And this is because if there was the center of the log, it's gonna be down here. And so as those rings go out, you're gonna have uh, this sort of a rainbow shape, if you will, this curved shape on the piece of wood. So this is a flat sawn piece of wood. 
This right here could be considered a quartered or possibly rift sawn piece of wood because the grain is going more or less up and down. Okay, why is this important? Because when wood moves, it will always move the opposite direction you think it will when you're looking at the end grain. So if you're shaped like this, right, the wood, when it decides to move, is actually going to cave the opposite direction. It's going to cave this way, okay? So that's why it's important to understand this. If you're building a project, for example, and you want to make something as flat as possible and you have to join multiple boards together, you may want to alternate your pieces so that when that movement occurs, it doesn't create one big huge bow across your entire project, okay? So that's one thing that's important to know. Secondly, this piece is not going to move hardly at all this way, okay? You're not going to get that kind of movement on a piece like this because the grain is going up and down. Now, I hope that that makes sense. The second thing that we want to look at is the top of the board, okay? So, we want to see, is this grain going straight or does it have some kind of wave or variance in it? Now, the reason I picked this board is because it's kind of interesting. It's exceptionally straight this way, almost as perfectly straight as you can get. But then, as we go down, you'll see there was a knot here or something at some point, and the wood had to grow around that, and so you see a little curve on there. Now, with this piece of wood, is that going to be a big, huge deal? Well, not necessarily, but it is something to be aware of. Again, the best wood is the most perfectly straight wood for building something like fine furniture. Um, this one here is a lot more difficult to tell because it is a flat sawn piece of wood. You're going to get what's called crowning on it. But, more or less, this is actually pretty straight for a piece of wood. Okay, and so I wouldn't be too worried about using a piece like this in a project because we're not seeing crazy wavy stuff like this. So in terms of stability, both of these would be really good choices. The third side we want to look at is this side itself. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now I'm going to draw on this again, and you'll see I'm following the grain. It goes like this, comes back in like so, goes back out. And you can see that there is actually quite a lot of variance on this side. Now again, is this going to be the end of the world? Not necessarily with a kiln dried piece of white oak. But these are things to take into consideration because this could go, again, it's generally going to go the opposite direction you think it is. So if there is any movement, it's going to go this way and that way, okay? This one here has some tongue and groove on it, so it's a little more difficult to see. But the grain is actually going almost perfectly straight down the edge of this board. Which is one of the reasons when I decided to make the tongue and groove on this, I examined the side edges. And that gave me a lot of assurance that what I was building was gonna end up being nice and straight. Now one of the questions that I've been asked probably more than anything over nearly 20 years of woodworking by beginner woodworkers is this question. What is the best way to make sure that my project is a success? In other words, what kind of wood should I be looking for, for my project? I actually got asked this question just the other week. Now here's the thing. I am a big supporter of kiln drying all wood, with exception of perhaps cedar, which you only want to air dry. But setting aside cedar, pretty much all wood I would recommend kiln drying. And the reason is for stability. You want to bring the moisture content down to a point where moisture from the atmosphere cannot re-enter and then cause all kinds of movement and expansion in your wood that can potentially ruin your project. Now, here's the thing. If you're looking to build a barn, I would have honestly no problem cutting some green wood on the sawmill, letting it dry out for a few weeks or a couple months, and then slapping it up for purlings or whatever you're gonna use it for. As long as it's not making surface ground contact and it's above the ground, Using green wood is perfectly fine for building barns and things. I mean, they have done that for thousands of years. However, if you want to build something like an outdoor piece of furniture, you would at least want to air dry that wood, okay? So we're progressing. Green wood, outdoor, above ground, usually fine. However, air dried wood, you got to let it dry for a long time. The golden standard has been about one year of air drying for every one inch of material. Okay, fair enough. So you can build something outdoor furniture like that because you're not going to be so concerned 
Outdoor furniture is usually going to be built with screws and things like that, and so you're not so concerned about movement and whatnot. And generally, it's not going to, you know, be like a fine piece of furniture. Now, when you get into finer furniture, where joinery is really, really important and your joint, everything has to be critical and close together, at that point, you definitely want to have kiln-dried material without excuse, okay? So, what I recommend then is for the best projects, you want to have kiln-dried material. So, let's go through this process and these steps again to see if we can sort of come to terms with how wood moves, why it moves, and what makes the best possible projects for what you're trying to work on. The first thing I would say is out of our control usually for woodworkers. And that is, we usually don't have control over the trees and the logs that are sawn. Unless you own a sawmill and you can cut your own material specifically and exactly how you want, we're kind of at the mercy of the lumber yard. However, what have we shown here today? Well, we've shown that when you're selecting lumber, you need to select it specifically for your project and the requirements that you need. There's plenty of flat sawn kiln dried wood that is perfect for dining tables and furniture and everything else. At the end of the day though, I would make sure that it's kiln dried and that your grain is relatively straight. You know, again, the more variance you have, the more you're going to be fighting these things. So even some woods that are extremely beautiful with all of the figure in them and the weird grain patterns, in the long run can cause real headaches, especially if you're building something for a customer. But we need to go back to that golden rule. And what is that golden rule? All wood moves. And so when you build something, don't become too frustrated if it doesn't look exactly the same in a few weeks or a year from when you first made it. There are some woods that are more stable than others, and we can talk about that probably in another video. But it's safe to say that nice, dry, straight grain wood is always going to be your best bet in understanding and being able to control how much the wood actually moves. And again, why does wood move? Because of stress. If you understand stress, you understand wood movement. Now one last thing I will say about this, and this might just be a little bit of a tail end of the conversation. You're going to be thinking to yourself, Michael, everything that you've told me is great, it's good information, but it kind of is the opposite of what we hear or see in a lot of the woodworking that's going on today. After all, uh, slab furniture has pretty much taken over the world in the last decade. I don't know how much longer. I know a guy that purchases uh, wrecked slab furniture. He's got a warehouse full of cracked epoxied furniture. But yes, slab furniture has all kinds of weird grain variations and patterns. It's cut off the pith of the tree or the center of that log in all kinds of strange ways. And in the long term, no matter how much you kiln dry it, no matter what you do to it, the more it is going to warp and bend and all of that, leading ultimately to dissatisfied customers. Because most of these become dining room tables. At the end of the day, nobody wants to put their plates or bowls or cups on an uneven surface. And with most slab furniture, <laughs> that's what ends up happening. And again, contrary to popular belief, it's actually the thicker the wood, the more that it's going to move and change and have variance in it. The thinner the wood is easier to, to keep flat in a kiln, whereas the thicker the wood is going to do what it's going to do. And when I think about this, I think about the guy that kiln dries all my wood for me. I don't do my own kiln drying. And he's been doing kiln drying for like 30 years. And one thing he told me that always stuck in my mind, he said, wood is going to do what it's going to do. You cannot stop nature. And it doesn't matter how much weight you put on it, how much you strap it down in a kiln to try to keep it that way. The thicker it is, the more it's going to want to move. And so that's one thing that's very important to understand. And there's a lot of reasons for that as well, but that could be another video. Now there's a lot of things that I could add to this video about why wood does what it does. The most important things, again, are it's the fact that all wood moves. This is a result of stress and it goes all the way back to nature from that tree growing out of the ground. Again, I have a video in the description below, a link there, that you can go back and watch one of the videos I made several years ago explaining the different ways wood is cut and the advantages and disadvantages of wood being cut in certain ways. I hope this quick video has been helpful for you. If you enjoy the content, please go ahead and subscribe. It'd be a pleasure to have you here at the Southern Indiana Sawmill channel. And we look forward to catching you next time. God bless you all.
Take care.